my name's Tim Whiting, I'm a millwright and uh, I've been working on mills for eight years and I've been working as a general woodworker for over 20 years now. And my team is now restoring Saxton Green Post Mill. I went to college and trained as a cabinet maker in 1998 and my first workshop when I went self-employed as a cabinet maker was in the grounds of Friston Windmill and from then on it's been windmills full stop. So there's been a post mill in Saxter Green since 1287 and the current building that's there now has been there since 1796. It was taken to the, to the site by 200 oxen. Saxter Green served as a working corn mill up until 1947, just after the war effort, and uh, is now under the care of English Heritage since 1984. I was drawn into being a millwright simply by the, the techniques of the woodworking that ancient millwrights and even modern millwrights use. The, the techniques have changed very, very little. We do have power tools now, obviously, but it just draws you in. You're copying things that were made 100, 200 years ago. So with Saxter Green, but the sails we're now putting on are a real close copy of the original working sails that the mill would have had in its last working days. By their own design, windmills are always put in a most prominent part of the village so that they can catch the wind as much as possible. And because of this, they're always in the, the thick of the weather. Yeah. So when they get to a certain age, things just need to be replaced. All coming off everywhere. It's quite an intense project to try and get as much done as possible. Redesigning a, a new set of sails for a, for a post mill, uh, often you'll find there is, there's sails on a mill, but they might not be quite right. That's going to need scraping back. It's been rubbing. So what we do is we go back to historical photographs of the mill and sometimes you can find uh, remnants of sails kicking around on the site and you can then copy the, the true measurements of how the sails were originally 50 or even 100 years ago. And then when we've got these measurements, we'll then completely design a brand new set of sails matching the original one. Normally we aim for when the mill last worked as a, as a commercial building and then from that we'll order in the timber which you can imagine is massive. We've got new stocks that are over 50 feet long and we've got whips which have formed part of the sail frames. All of these components then have to be completely hand shaped and mortised to be your new design. There's a lot of shaping, there's a lot of chamfers, there's all sorts of different um, compound angles and basically generally the way we do it would be quite traditional. The actual things that everyone's doing, the joints, all the different types of, um, way of way of putting things together is all the same as it always would have been. We still use winches, we still use uh, wire ropes, We're, it's, it's very very traditional. When you're building sails for a windmill um, it's not just a straight trellis like you'd buy from a shop and this is designed with the twist to make sure that that it's an even pressure when the wind hits the sails as opposed to putting a, a strong force where the sail would be weak. So every single angle on, on the sail is slightly different. All the joints are then uh, painted up with traditional paint, so it'll be a lead-based paint in all the joints. And then we use uh, a linseed oil-based paint to get the nice white finish that everyone um, looks at when they, when they see a mill with fresh sails on. Although we make them as light as possible, the actual sail frames are still going to be reasonably heavy for a timber building. Now, a lot of people think oak is a, is a general timber in the stocks and, and all the big components. Oak is too heavy and also it's quite brittle, whereas the type of timbers we use, being a Siberian larch or a Douglas fir, or traditionally it would have been a pitch pine, so they're very strong and very flexible. We're using a 60 tonne crane but will stand at Saxter Green. It can be quite tricky when you're fitting sails onto a mill. There's a lot of work that you can't reach from out of the storm hatch, um, which is a small patch on the front of the mill. Um, you can't reach everywhere from there. So we tend to use rope access work or we use the cherry picker. Um, so depending on what we're doing, there's a lot of working at height Suffolk has some of the most amazing examples of windmills in the country. 
it's quite an honour to be able to work on Saxocrine because it's had some amazing mill rights over the years and it's, it's quite a privilege for us to be following in their footsteps.